Danielle Sepsi here. This is Gnome at Home. And today we're making a copycat recipe for one of my childhood favorites. If you're from the New York area especially, I feel like this is something that everyone had on their counter at all times. Just in case company came over, you had it. And this is chocolate chip crumb loaf that mimics Entenmann's. Entenmann's was always one of my favorite treats as a kid. The donuts, the crumb cake. I still, when I walk by it in the, in the grocery store, I have to stop myself from buying every single thing. It's just so nostalgic and delicious. So this is my homemade version of the chocolate chip crumb loaf. It's got a beautiful chocolatey crumb topping, melty chocolate chips inside, a nice kind of plush, soft, buttery, pound cake-like cake inside, but definitely a bit lighter than a pound cake. It is just a go-to in my house. Really good and pretty easy. And it's a homemade version, so it's just one step better. Sorry, Intimates, I love you, but I think this is just one step better. So let's get started. We first need a stick of unsalted butter. You don't want it melted, you just want it kind of room temp. We're going to beat that butter with our sugar. You can use a stand mixer or a hand beater like this. Whatever you have, you can even do it by hand. Just need a little bit more elbow grease. Start to mix that butter. Now we're gradually going to add one and a quarter cups of just white granulated sugar. When you're using a mixer like this, be sure to rotate your bowl every so often. Just make sure you're really incorporating. And also you can use a rubber spatula and just scrape down the side. Now we're going to add our other fat, which is vegetable or canola oil. We're going to just gradually pour that in. Once it's light and fluffy, we can add our vanilla. This is two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. You always wanna add your flavoring and extract with the fat in the beginning. The fat just brings out the flavors in the extract even more. Now we're going to add our eggs. I have two large eggs that are room temperature. Baking with room temperature eggs is usually the best thing because it actually keeps all the ingredients even temperature so that when it bakes, it bakes more evenly. Let's just incorporate one at a time. Again, these are large eggs. Beautiful. Now, here is one of my kind of signature ingredients when it comes to baking. This is a big deal, guys. I'm giving you a big secret here. Sour cream. I use sour cream in a lot of my recipes because it adds a wonderful richness. It just moistens whatever you're making so much and also adds a little bit of acid and tang where it just takes the flavor up a notch. So I'm going to put in some sour cream here and incorporate it. Now we're going to add our dry ingredients. Here's another secret. Use cake flour. Cake flour makes for a much more fluffy, light texture, a little bit less dense. So this is two cups of cake flour, and to that I'm going to add some salt. Also, you need salt in everything, in baking also. That's where you're gonna get a lot of flavor. We've got baking powder and baking soda, and it's just enough, just like half a teaspoon, because you want it to rise, but we don't want it too fluffy and airy because it still is like sort of a pound cakey type cake. And now we're going to add this flour mixture. We can do this actually by hand. And why we do this is because we won't over mix it. The more you mix something that has flour in it, the more the glutens develop again, and that will cause a very dense, chewy, gummy, not great textured cake. So we're going to just mix it just until everything is incorporated. And don't forget, we still have half of the sour cream to add in. So once we get about three quarters of the way mixed here, we can add in our sour cream, the rest of that in. Now on low speed, mix it in. So rich, so creamy. And this is also when you can taste and say, you know what, I like to have a little bit more salt or I wanna add a little bit more vanilla. Whatever you like. Sometimes when you make things like this, the chocolate chips or the blueberries or whatever you're putting inside may sink to the bottom. To avoid that, you can actually toss them with a little bit of flour. So I have here a cup and a half of chocolate chips. So this is just semi-sweet chocolate chips and now a little dusting of flour. And then you can just take your hands, whatever, toss those together and you'll see they're coated with flour now. 
Let's fold them in, put them all in at once. We're going to just fold in so nicely those beautiful chocolate chips and they'll be ready to put them in the pan. We gotta make the topping, the crumbs, the best part. Time to put in the pan. I've got a nine by five inch loaf pan here. Sometimes this doesn't quite fit in here. So you may actually be able to get another small loaf out of it or a few muffins or something like that. Spray a good amount of nonstick spray in the corners, etc. And this is always my trick, professional trick. It's what we use in my bakery too. We make hundreds of loaves of banana bread every day. In order to release them easily, you put the parchment. Take the parchment. You want it just a few inches longer than the pan, but just tuck it right inside. Allow at least an inch or so to hang outside. That way when it cooks and you just pull this and it releases. Now we're going to pour our batter. You want it to go three quarters of the way up the pan. Again, we don't want to overfill. Yeah, that looks great. So three quarters of the way up the pan. Now we're going to get our crumbs ready. I have a little bit of batter left so I can just spray my baby loaf. Put a little parchment in there too. I'm going to see my niece and nephew later, so they'll appreciate these little baby loaves. <laughs> now for the crumbs. I've got a bowl here. I'm gonna put a little bit of cake flour. We're gonna add some white sugar, some dark brown sugar, which gives it a lot of flavor. A pinch of salt, about an eighth of a teaspoon. Also about an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon for a little bit of warmth. I'm just gonna take my hands, I'm going to incorporate this together. Break up any lumps of the dark brown sugar. It smells good already somehow. Two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Just stir that together. Okay, now we need to incorporate the butter. So this is a half a stick of melted butter. Stir it together, but you're not going to whip it. You don't wanna use a whisk here. You want to just kind of toss it around with a rubber spatula or a spoon. If you mix it kind of rigorously, it'll become a paste and you won't see those nice little crumbles that you know and love in a crumb topping. This is looking so perfect. It looks just like Entenmann's crumbs on their cake. Now we're ready to put the crumbs on top. Here's my trick with this. When you're putting crumbs on any kind of cake, it can get heavy and cause your cake to kind of sink and not rise properly. So to distribute the weight more evenly and allow for a better rise, start by sprinkling the crumbs on the outer edge first, and that'll push the edges down and boost the top, and then you can start to fill the center. Now let's put this in a 325 degree oven for about 45 to 55 minutes just until the toothpick in the center comes out clean. After about 55 minutes, my loaf is fully cooked. It looks golden. The center came out clean. Now when it's piping hot right out of the oven, you're going to sprinkle some more chocolate chips on top just for aesthetics and a nice creamy finish. It'll look so good. Just let the heat of that cake melt those chips and it'll be perfect. I let my cake cool for about 15 minutes in the pan. Now I'm just going to continue to let it cool, but out of the pan. So just take a knife and run it around just to help loosen, just so you don't lose anything. Now just pull the paper gently. Look at that. Beautiful. You may lose a little bit of crumb, it's okay. Now um, just let it cool further. You don't want this piping hot when you eat it. You kind of want it like room temperature, maybe a little warm is okay, but I like to have it kind of more room temperature. I think the texture is even better. Okay, cake is cooled. Now I'm just going to dust it lightly with powdered sugar, just a little bit. You still wanna see the crumbs. Now take a serrated knife, let's cut a piece off because I can't wait any longer. <laughs> I mean, that looks exactly like the store-bought cake, but better. Look at that. Moist, look at the chocolate chips. Evenly distributed, they're not at the bottom, and that's because of that flour trick when we toss chocolate chips in flour. Nice crumb topping. We'll take what we call a TV bite, because sometimes I take too big of a bite and then I can't talk. This will continue to be one of my all-time favorite recipes that I've ever created because it's all about nostalgia. Again, it just brings you back to a moment in your life special memories with family. It's just, it's so special to me, but 
it's just taken to the next level. It's homemade, the quality of the ingredients are so good and it's so fresh. So you know, you're getting it right out of the oven. You guys are going to obsess over this. Look how beautiful that is. Wrap it up in cellophane, give it as a gift. This is the perfect addition to your next brunch, breakfast, have it all week long on your counter for your kids. This is it guys. Please tag me if you make this on Instagram and on TikTok, whatever, at Chef Danielle Sepsi. And don't forget, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post a new recipe. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy your chocolate chip crumb loaf. I know I am. See you later. Vivian, what are you eating? Cake. Do you like it? Do you like the cake? Yeah, mm-hmm.